enforcement in the United States, and actually all over the world, they're using a system called CompStat. And if you use it correctly, it tracks crime data, identifies patterns, and that way you can hold yourself accountable to public safety goals. All over the world, we're creating these kinds of accountability metrics for crime. I would like us to measure instead justice. How do you do that? Well, you can measure the disparities, the burdensome policing, as well as you measure the crime. And I said instead, I should say, in addition to. There's no reason to not measure the crime, but I'd like to measure justice as well. I can measure not just the disparity, but the portion of the disparity that most likely belongs to law enforcement. And that way, you've got a metric that you're optimizing for that says, I don't want to unnecessarily be stopping these folks. I don't want to be doing it disproportionately and unfairly. And I can hold myself to reducing those disparities as much as it's on me to be able to do that. example, in Las Vegas, right, which is a great place to work for anybody who gets a chance, especially if you get to go with a police escort, we were able to show them that their foot pursuits were disproportionately responsible for their use of force incidences. Why would that be? Well, if I'm in a foot pursuit, right, my adrenaline is going through the roof, my heart rate is pumping, and I know that the person I'm chasing is a bad guy. Because if I'm a cop, I think, who the heck runs from cops other than bad guys? Now, what that really means in actuality even if the bad guy gives up at the end, they may be getting a shot to the kidneys for the price of making that problem. So once we were able to show Las Vegas Metro that that's what was going on, they, along with their community, said, oh, we can change that. We can train the officers to just like count to 10. The basic things you're supposed to do in a relationship so you don't yell at people, slow down, deep breaths, even don't touch the person before backup shows up. And the following year, that community and law enforcement collaboration produced a 23% reduction in police use of force across the board, not just foot pursuits. And that's become a national model throughout the United States for how you train on these issues. States, every 20 years or so, um, black and brown communities light cars on fire um, because of something that someone in law enforcement did. And frequently, it's more than one city. It's almost impossible for the elites to see it until it's right there in blazing fire in front of them because of the disconnect between these communities who've been under this strain for generations. These don't happen because somebody had a bad day. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Rosa Parks didn't stay in her seat because she was tired. She was an organizer. She was an activist, right? She'd been planning that for over a year. As we talk about moving into a world in the fourth industrial revolution where integrated systems are necessary for economic survival, it would be absurd of us not to recognize that integrated societies are necessary for societal progress. Because things burn to the ground when those who have the least have no other voice.